Angular 20 was just released, and at this point, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that it got a whole lot better. After all, the Angular team spent the last few years resurrecting a bloated, enterprise-loving legacy framework into something that even the most pretentious React devs could actually use. And before you start a riot in the comments, yes, I am one of those pretentious React devs. Angular 20 is a big milestone that ships stable versions of major features, brings serious performance upgrades, and quietly tries to win back developers who left years ago for younger, hotter alternatives. It started offering signal-based reactivity, beginning with version 16, and now version 20 promotes a bunch of these signal APIs to stable status. But reactivity isn't just for local state anymore. Angular 20 introduces a native way to model asynchronous operations, like HTTP calls, directly inside your reactive signal graph. So now you can stream values, access status flags as signals, and even use an experimental HTTP resource API built on top of the classic HTTP client. It supports interceptors, mocking, and everything else you'd expect. What's even more interesting is that Angular is finally rebuilding their form system from the ground up using signals. If we are honest, the current form APIs are powerful, but feel like they were designed in the age of jQuery. This new system, on the other hand, combines the best parts of template and reactive forms into a single unified model. On the performance front, Angular 20 stabilizes incremental hydration, which means your app doesn't have to render everything at once. So you can now seamlessly hydrate parts of the UI when they're actually needed. Server-side rendering also gets a serious upgrade, with stable rote-level rendering modes and hydration that can be now configured per rote or component. But the thing I'm the most excited about is that Zoneless Angular is now in developer preview. If you worked with Angular in the past, you are probably familiar with the CPU melting mess that change detection is, so this really is a great addition. Of course, we also got a bunch of useful quality-of-life improvements. Version 20 ships with TypeScript 5.8 support, hot module reload by default, type-checked host bindings and listeners, and a new schematic to clean up unused imports. On top of that, Karma is finally dead, and Angular now offers experimental support for VTest and WebTest Runner. And, as much as we might roll our eyes, there is another big shift we have to discuss. The Angular docs now offer a dedicated section for AI development. It includes recipes, best practices, and code samples for integrating LLMs and streaming chat responses using the resource API. In other words, Angular's not just adding AI features as an afterthought, they're actually building infrastructure for it. So if you left the framework years ago, or if you are considering learning something new, now is the best time to check out Angular. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.